7,720 pounds. Rear kitchen with a big living room slide and a bedroom slide out. Really a, a pretty darn nice Sunnybrook land in here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. I think this would be perfect for just kind of like a park site or a seasonal site. Maybe you got a deck you want to build on the side of it. This thing this is a good model for some long-term use. First, a quick look with our slides closed. Funny thing is, other than the uh, the refrigerator, you'll lose the fridge in transit. Like you can see, you can get to the bedroom. The bathroom's behind the door, obviously easily accessible. Funny thing is, though, for the most part, rear kitchen travel access not as important, especially on a model like this that is really kind of, I think, built around the idea of some kind of long-term destination use. Funny thing about rear kitchens is their floor plans tend to really just let le lend themselves to, to leaving it parked somewhere versus hauling it around quite a bit. Nothing says you couldn't. There's nothing that says you can't tow it. It's just that that isn't how they tend to be used. And it's just, it's always crazy to me how much of a difference a super slide like this makes. Even a small slide makes a big, big difference. And it opens up the room in here just dramatically. Now that's a high to bed style sleeper sofa, conventional inner spring. Um, by the way, you can see the freestanding table and excellent window coverage. Now, for those of you not familiar with Sunnybrook, because um, they are a company that is no longer with us in a sense, Sunnybrook Towable RVs actually became Winnebago Towable RVs. That's an interesting thing a lot of people don't know about. When Winnebago decided to re-enter the towable RV market, technically now for the third time, they started as Winnebago Trailer. Most people know them as motorhomes, but uh, they actually purchased the Sunnybrook Build Facility in uh, northern Indiana. And a lot of the core DNA of what you see here, if you're looking close, you can actually still see it in today's Winnebago campers. I'm actually kind of familiar with these from way back when. My grandparents actually had a Sunnybrook fifth wheel. And I spent more than one night on the dinette of that thing. Of course, if I tried that today, I would wake up and my neck would probably be sprained to some insane degree. Because when you're a kid and your bones are still bendy, you can literally sleep on a bed of nails. You don't care. You just, yeah, I'm camping with grandpa and grandma. I'm good. But then as you grow up, if you sleep wrong, quote, hey, your, your neck gets all twisted up and, oh man, you're down for the count. Like, it takes me a week. Like, there's some days... I'm backing out of the driveway. I'm like, well, let Jesus take the wheel because I can't turn my head to the left to see if I'm going to get killed in cross traffic. Thankfully, I live on a very slow street with not really a lot of traffic. <laughs> and I'm being a little facetious here. Obviously, I would not be driving in an unsafe situation. Regardless, you get the idea. Uh, good window coverage in here. And I've always liked rear kitchens for the very social seating arrangement. Like you've got the sofa, the dining, directly across from, I would say chairs, plural. But you can see there's only a single recliner right here. I'm suspecting somebody probably swapped out one of those. I, I'm actually not sure if that it right there is the chair that came with this camper or if they took those chairs out and then replaced them both with just the one. Don't know. Um, but uh, all I know is what we got here and overall structurally the camper looks good. If the biggest thing about this is you need a chair... I'd, I'd say we're doing pretty well considering the age and the budget and everything. This has been well kept. Six foot nine interior height, by the way, which is really nice. Now, this was made before entertainment was like the focal point of a lot of travel trailering. And as a result, this is just simple and basic. You could add a TV if you want. Actually, by virtue of the fact that it's not super boxy up here, makes it a little friendlier to modern flat screens that really weren't in a ton of production when this RV was built. Um, that is a DVD stereo down below, by the way. And there's a sliding privacy door to cut off kind of the bed and bath master suite. And as we come up here, in the full bed slide, we see a 60 by 80 true clean with some handy breeze windows. Always a welcome feature. Power outlets right on the side of the bed there. And up front here, we have ourselves a large closet. And actually, let me get this open so that you can really get an idea of uh, the storage space in here. Kind of like we did in the kitchen space. Now, in today's market, when you see a corner cabinet like that, people are going, Oh, is it washer dryer ready? And the answer here is no. This is made before... That was even thought of really going into travel trailers. It's kind of funny how only in the last few years has that started to become 
uh, something folks are really looking for. Now this is what's called uh, a split bath where the bedroom and bathroom are kind of all together in one room. And uh, it's a classic design. It's actually very space efficient. It helps keep the RV shorter um, and lighter versus a private bath that you have to walk around. It actually saves about two and a half feet. But I know that not everybody's all hot to trot for this. There's a lot of room around that toilet. I'm just kind of noticing, like, if you got big hips and big shoulders, you're going to be good to go right there. Um, vent fan up here above. The taller ceiling means taller shower space. And something else I want to point out, because the last thing you're going to want, if you do have somebody on that high to bed, is you're not going to want your guest coming in at night, effectively into your bedroom, to get to the toilet and staring at you while you breathe in your sleep. You know, or, you know, whatever, you get the idea, half bath, or the, the bath over there, you get the point. But what's nice here, if we take a look, you can see there is a sliding privacy curtain that you can pull across here. So you can create a visual line of sight block. It may also just make you feel a little bit more comfortable, like for just a quick change of clothes, you can pull the curtain, get yourself swapped out. And something I didn't mention, but if you want to, you could throw a TV against the wall up here. And I don't know where this thing was stored, but it was obviously kept away from the sun in some fashion, whether that was uh, by use of an RV cover or if it was like kept in a barn, I don't know. But the skin is just glossy as all oh, get out. It is gleaming. Um, you can also see where the folks just use some conventional like kitchen tin foil in those windows to keep the sun out of it. Maybe kind of a low budget method, but an effective method of keeping your RV a little bit cooler nonetheless. We'll get up on the roof in just a moment, but first I want you to get to see that there's, you know, no major dings or bangs or anything into this. She's, she's all right, you know? I think there was a, uh, a Rick James song about that, talk about how she's all right. Anyway, more, more to the point. Big power awning on this thing too, and I love that big campsite viewing window. And like I said, just so you can see it for yourself, the skin on this is just gleaming. And the roof looks great, no surprise there. I'm taking a look at the seals that are in place. They look okay. I can see where they've aged a bit, but nothing that really even concerns me at this stage. I would say next year, you might wanna start looking for spots where you might need to do just a little touch up dollop or bead. But overall, this looks like, and I think, I think these are still all the original factory seals, but, uh, you know, if I get up here, I can I can touch these things. They're still, I mean, wa watch how they move. They're still squishy. They're not dried out. They're not chalky. They're not rotting. They're good. <laughs> They're real good, actually. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Give us a call at Halet RV. We do it all at Halet RV. <laughs> Hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care. Stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.